Good afternoon and welcome back to the Veterans in Politics Nevada State Assembly Candidates interview. My name is Alexis Plunkett. I'm a Nevada criminal defense attorney. I would like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, Ron Q for Clark County Treasurer, Michael Broadway Real Estate, Real Water, and the Lakeside Business Suites. And at this time, I would like to give the panel an opportunity to introduce themselves. Robert Faust, U.S. Army. Jay Giraldi, U.S. Marine. And today we have Patricia Little, the candidate for Nevada State Assembly District 17. And I would like to give Ms. Little a chance to give a one-minute introduction and a little bit about your background. Um, I served in two sessions. And... Oh. I, I served in two sessions, and uh, it was very, very educational for me. I was very concerned about what's happening in education in the school district. I had six children, and they went to the school system, and I want to make sure it was great for them, too. And um, I really enjoy always trying to help people. And uh, if I can do anything to help, I will be glad to. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to the panel for questions. Patricia, what, uh, do you uh, support banning semi-automatic assault weapons? And if you do or do not, why? Yeah, what your question was, do I agree to ban? To ban? goes into the feed. That way they can hear you on the on the, uh, on the So feed. what you're asking me is if I, I agree. Do you support banning assault weapons? Semi-automatic assault weapons. Now, when we say banning, banning I'm going to ask something before I answer this. Banning is, is when bad There are no more. Banning is. It's banned. Bad. It's That's gone. Right. Okay. I agree. <laughs> Robert Faust. Pat, could you tell us a little bit about your uh, assembly uh, district and what do you think is the biggest problem in your district and what would you like to do about it? Well, I, I, I happen to be in a pretty good district right now because it's uh, not in the old neighborhood like I used to live off of Lake Mead and a and, uh, long time ago. So this is a nice neighborhood in the area. I, I think the people in that area are very concerned, and I think they take pretty good care of their neighbors and the people around them, too. So I'm pretty happy there. I don't see that many problems, and I don't see the cop cars coming around so often. So it must be pretty good. Oh. Jay Trouble, um, do you support uh, defunding Planned Parenthood? Now, when you say defunding, that means you're not going to give money. That's right. To Planned Parenthood, and Planned Parenthood is for abortions. It's for women's services. They provide all sorts of services, from counseling to help. Well, me, let me because uh, that's. Uh, they provide different services, but uh, the majority of services is abortion. Uh, the their other services they provide provide. Uh, Depending on who you're, what organization you're speaking with, but the average is saying it's about five percent for other, ten percent in other services and the primary portion. Well, I don't mind helping people when they're having a baby and they need help and everything, but I'm not, not one minute in wanting up for abortion. I don't believe that. I think you can have a baby and give it up for adoption or something, but you don't kill a baby. Am I getting too strong on you guys? No, 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 no. <laughs> I should be. I'm from Chicago, so I, I, you know, grew up like that. So when you ask something, I say, well, I don't know if I want to do any of that stuff and everything. But yeah, I don't believe in abortion and killing. Robert Faust, um, where do you stand on on the uh, position of transgender bathrooms? Should there just be one or two bathrooms, or should we have three? No. There are three of them? You mean uh, one can go for a boy, one for a girl, and then the other one can go boy and girl? Yeah. They should have a quid party in there, huh? No. <laughs> well, that's kind of hard 
hard for me. <laughs> me to say the school district should have party time in a bathroom. <laughs> oh boy, that's a tough one to answer. <laughs> no, I guess. <laughs> I don't want that to, to mix up. I just want boy or girl. <laughs> This one is. <laughs> okay, I'll behave. <laughs> Next. Uh, <laughs> uh, Patricia, J I'm Jay Jolly, I'm sorry. Patricia, uh, do you support uh, a sanctuary state? Would you vote for a sanctuary state as a uh, as Nevada State Assembly woman? Now, sanctuary. 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 What does that mean? Uh, that means that uh, illegal aliens would be that commit crimes. They would not be deported, and uh, the, the the local law enforcement would not cooperate with uh, ICE or the federal government in deporting illegal aliens here. And also, uh, if that's that's uh, pretty much it in a nutshell. So. What I'm, I'm saying is that I support the police department to send them back if they're not here legally. Um, sanctuary state, the laws basically cover, from my, from my understanding, in other states and as well as here, is that if a legal alien commits a crime, um, even like, for example, we have sanctuary school districts. So yeah. if there's someone that's here legally, they're, say they're 19 years old, but they're in high school, and they're saying they're 17, and they commit a crime, um, that they will not cooperate with the federal government or ICE to deport that uh, illegal alien. I agree with you. If they, de if they commit a crime, they should be deported. Is that correct? That, that's your answer, yes. yes. I mean, that's... Yeah. yeah. Okay. They committed a crime, we don't want them here. We have enough uh, spaces, you know, they're in jail. We ran out of them, so they're going to have to find another one. Robert. Robert Faust. <clears throat> we have a lot of mentally ill people in this, in this society today. Um, could you give us some insight or some suggestions on what you might want to do as a state legislator to help correct this problem? I, I think we need to really go further to help them. Um, I don't think they just automatically paid for it to become it. It was something that happened to them. And I think they need help, and we're here to help them. And that's why we have doctors, medical, and a lot of those medical things are available, and we need to give them to them and help them. Uh, Jay Giraldi. Uh, Pat, on the, uh, back on the Second Amendment, uh, when you, uh, can you touch on a little bit more as far as elaborate on banning assault weapons? Do you understand, just want to make sure you understand what assault weapon, semi-automatic or assault weapon is. So for example, a handgun, mm -hmm. which that's semi-automatic, that would be considered banning because it would be considered a semi-automatic assault weapon depending on if it's labeled as that. Anything would be labeled assault weapon. Uh, the van that was using a terrorist attack in New York in the past, for example, was an assault weapon. So if, if uh, a handgun was labeled as assault weapon and a semi-automatic, would you support banning those? So if I, I'm waiting, Cheryl. No. <laughs> would I support them? Microphone. Would you support banning them? Banning them? Yeah, take it, taking them from law-abiding citizens. Well, law-abiding citizens Microphone. sometimes are trying to protect yeah. family. Oh, law-abiding citizens are trying to just, just you know, just uh, protect their families and stuff. A lot of them have guns for that reason, don't they? Yes. So those I would protect in a minute. I think that's a good idea. But not for somebody to go rob a store, steal a gun, and try to kill somebody. I'm sorry. I confused you. No, no. You're going to go home and take an aspirin. I know that. <laughs> Probably a couple pills. <laughs> sorry. Robert Goss, 
Now, do you support the, private, the, private, the privatization of the VA healthcare system? The veterans, I'm 100% with veterans. The question is, do you support the privatization of health care for veterans, or should they stay in the Veterans Administration? Aren't they both the same in health no. to protect them? No. So which one? Yes. Why? <laughs> 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 Well, if I go with cards and stuff, they're really going to be messed up, aren't Let's they? Let's just go drink over at the pubs. That's not a good idea. <laughs> well, well, I served up there twice, and they made it, so I guess I can make it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Change rolling. Patricia. Yes. Uh, so right now, um, there's an executive order passed where a veteran, if they're not receiving the care at the VA, they can seek medical care outside the VA as an alternative. Do you endorse that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we went to the VA hospital way out there yesterday, the day before. That place is gigantic. It's way out there. Have you been out to that VA hospital way out, way out in North Las Vegas, way out there? Unfortunately, yes. That place is gigantic and they're very good. That's a big, big elephant. Oh! <laughs> That's what it is. Oh. It's built in the middle of nowhere where nobody can reach it. Exactly. It's just a social club. Yeah. And it should be sold. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. It should be sold. Amen. You're right. We went all the way out there. Okay. Cheryl said to sign off. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Next. You guys are never going to be alike. You're going to, when I leave, you're going to be saying, oh my. Gosh, we hope nobody else comes in like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Patricia. Yes. Um, for your district, uh, the area, the geographic area that you're covering, um, tell us uh, maybe one item or two items that uh, you feel passionate about that you would like to see a change if you were to. Seat, sit as the uh, Nevada State Assemblywoman of District 17. I'm, I've always been very concerned about education, getting kids to school safely and home. Um, Microphone. Not this thing better stay up here. <laughs> You're going to be a politician. You're going to have to learn how to use them. Well, you know, I'm so used to it in case you might hit somebody in the head or something. So, um, no, I, I think it's very serious. That, uh, we take care. Did you say? Say it again. Something that you feel passionate about, and that you would like to see changed in the in the uh, state assembly, or you know, something changed in our state that uh, is that needs to be corrected. That you feel passionate about. Well, I when I served it was quite a while back. I always did feel very concerned about education and what was happening in the school systems, and especially Rancho being a high school. Um, when my sons went there, and you know, back in the 91s and 93s and stuff, uh, we had, myself and quite a few of us, we put on a lot of things. We had a fashion show, we had banquets, and we did a lot of stuff. And I was inquiring with quite a few people if there's been anything happening in, at Ranch or anything. They said there's no programs like that going on. So I just thought that at that time, um, I thought it was pretty nice to go over and have a, a fashion show and a banquet and a dance there. Uh, that was very good. And, and we had a big, big, big group coming out to that. And, I was very happy with it. I thought it was a good thing. Robert Faust. Pat, if you were on the assembly and legislation came before you to vote on it, and the legislation was to incorporate a tribunal for the family court system here in Nevada, how would you vote on that and why? Well, I think it's a good idea, and I, I, think, I think it's very valuable, and I think it's something that we need. Is that right? Is that a good answer? 
you're not either one of you saying a thing. That's what we do. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I'd like to uh, read to you a couple of quotes from our founding fathers and one from uh, our late John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Um, first, I'd like to quote uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. The rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. And then I'd like to quote uh, George Washington from his 1789 inauguration address that the propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected upon a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself has ordained. And I'd like to include one last quote from Abraham Lincoln in 1863 of the uh, proclamation of a national fast where he said, it behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sins and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. What are your thoughts on those quotes from our founding fathers and from our late John I agree with them 100%. They, uh, that's what we need more in the nation. Well, I'm going to tell you something. This thing better start jumping up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. All three of them were very fabulous. Uh, that's what we need more in the country than ever. <clears throat> Pat, yeah, could you tell us a little bit about your educational background? Well, yes, I, um, I went to um, St. Procopius in Chicago, Illinois, and uh, then I dropped out of, uh, out of school, and then I went back, when we moved here in 1991, I went back to uh, school, and I got a hot, uh, took classes and everything, and um, I graduated here, I think it was in 98, I, and around that time, uh, just around when all my kids were graduating, but it was very important to me that I, I would graduate. If you were on the legislation and a bill came before you uh, that had religious overtones to it, do you think that you would go with the state constitution or would you side with the Bible? <laughs> I would, I'd have to go with him than with the other guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's very, I think it's important. I don't think it's a, a real problem for somebody to say a little prayer anytime at school. Do you? Uh, well, we're going to remain neutral on our okay. position. But, uh, Patricia, uh, do you support the uh, Pledge of Allegiance in our school. Yes, I do. And that little phrase, under God, is important. Do you know that Pledge of Allegiance? It says they added under God under it. Didn't they? Yeah. No, well, that's what it's going to be. Mr. <clears throat> if you were on the state legislature and a bill came before you to defund, defund high school sports, would you do that? Would you vote for that, or would you be against it? Can you tell us why? Well, first of all, I, if, if they've been adding a lot of unwanted uh, sports and stuff, but when my kid, my sons went to school, they had like wrestling or football or baseball and stuff, and they were funded. But uh, when I was at Rancho High School, we donated a lot of money from the parents' groups to support all of those things. So I don't know what they're asking for for more if they're just wasting the money on stuff that is not necessary for the, for the, for the students. So I would have to look into it. And um, I, uh, I think it's very important to have those, those things happening in this, you know, kids active. Uh, and I don't think it wouldn't hurt anything, parents and everybody donating money to help if we needed money to get those kids where they need to go. Uh, hey, Charlie, Patricia, uh, do you support, this is a, this is a two-fold question, um, do you support uh, a financial audit transparency of the school district, Clark County School District, and would you support uh, uh, 
if after doing an audit, the reimbursement or this uh, redistribution of some of those fundings or finances towards school lab, school activities such as football or or other sports. Yes, I would. I think they're very important. They keep a lot, all those athletic things keeps a lot of good kids. When you say yes, are you saying yes to the transparency or yes to the? The transparency means getting the money, right? Oh, no, tra the transparency as far as uh, having it transparent to the school district of the finances and audit and making it public to the, to the people. I don't think anybody cares if uh, people would like to know what's happening in there and um, they can let us know. <laughs> you mean the transparency of letting know how much money is spent? Um, how much is spent, where it's being spent? I thought we knew that all the time. I remember when my sons went to Rancho, they would always say how much money they were doting, doing for, for football and for baseball and basketball and for wrestling. Uh, we were always, as a group of parents, we always knew how much finances were and how much we donated extra towards that funding. Yeah, no, Chris, um, speaking specifically of the, uh, the taxes that are collected for the school district for, to fund the school district, uh, as far as a, an audit of that, of that, of the tax dollars and where it's being distributed to, to the dollar. And you want me to know if I think it's a good idea? Yes. I think it's a good idea if it's going to help the students and making better Americans, I, I think it's a good idea. <clears throat> now you're going to all get out of here and say, oh, she's going to try to get money out of our pockets. How would you vote on a tax increase? I'm not in favor of tax increases. <laughs> I think there's, I think there's quite a bit, and I think what we need to do is take advantage of what we can, just like a homemaker. You get so much money, and you've got to make sure that it stretches and you don't waste it. Uh, Patricia, would you uh, support the? Uh, or would you vote for funding the EAS? The EAS is uh, ESA. I'm sorry, ESA. I, uh, ESA is for um, fun. It's a it's for uh, providing a parent a, a choice to take their money and uh, put their child in the school of their preference versus charter, public, or private. You know, if you could clarify that because when we pay taxes as homeowners and stuff, or whatever we do, pick, and it goes into the education fund. So are we saying that parents that have kids in the school di district and they're paying taxes, we're asking the school to give us the money back? Yes. Yes, so, so yes, and just to, just to clarify, is uh, there was a uh, legislation that was passed um, where uh, there was the, the, the parents could receive funding that's the, which of the tax dollars a certain amount, and then they could use that to put their child in private school, for example, versus public school, if they chose to do that. Um, does that help clarify? Yes. So what you're saying is, if I had my kids going to school and I was paying taxes all the time, and I like to put them in a private school, and I can get money from somebody. To put you you could get that tax money. Some of that tax money that would be going to school that you can use it to take them to private school. Well, I, I would have to agree with any parents that want to put their kid in their school of their choice. Uh, if it's not 100% of it, uh, I think it's a good idea. I don't know, I think it's covered just about everything. <laughs> Are you going to throw me out now? <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we would like to give Ms. Little a one minute chance to summarize why you would like the Veterans in Politics endorsement. Well, because veterans have a good reputation, and they're good Americans, and they're good soldiers, and I think that's, I couldn't ask for anybody better to support me. This time, I'd like to thank our sponsors once again, Ron Cube for Clark County Treasurer, Michael Broadway Real Estate, Real Water, 
and Lakeside Business Suites. And this concludes the Veterans in Politics Nevada State Assembly candidate interview for District 17.